Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo IdeaPad laptop. This one is a Lenovo IdeaPad 110, the exact model is a 110-14 IBR. The model name for this one is an 80T6. That information can be found on the sticker on the bottom of the laptop or in the case or inside the BIOS. In this video, I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step how you can open it up and how you can increase the performance of this laptop made dramatically just by replacing the mechanical drive with a solid stage drive. You can purchase any solid stage drive 2.5 inch. I recommend you guys with a Samsung brand, Samsung Evo. Those are very expensive, but they're much more durable. But you can go with the cheapest brand with an, let's say in this case, with an adapter is really cheap economy, but it doesn't last as much as like a Samsung drive, but they're cheap and they're suitable for these laptops too. Depending on your budget, you can purchase your own SSD 2.5 inch. These laptops do not take an NVMe or M.2 storage. It only takes a uh, 2.5 inch SATA. All right, so let's get into it. Just remember by replacing your main drive with a new drive, you will not have any operating system on the new drive. So as soon as you boot up, you will say there's no operating system. I made a video how to create your Windows 10 USB boot drive or Windows 11. So check that link in the video description so you know how to create your Windows 10 or 11 USB boot drive. And I made another video how to install it properly on any Lenovo laptop so you don't get those extra bloatware installed in your Windows like Candy Crush, affiliated uh, programs like uh, antivirus and stuff like that. So check those links in case you want to install your video, your uh, Windows. All right. So let's get into it. Let's get it started. So first thing first, back up your files. Then power down the laptop and you want to flip it upside down. Now I'll use the screwdriver that I like to use, the iFix screwdriver set. And from this tool set, I'll be using a Phillips number one. If you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, get the basic set. For the opening tools, I'll be using a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are really suitable for opening cases and covers. All right. So down here first, we need to remove the bottom cover. All the screws are the same size and height, so go ahead and remove all the screws that you see down here. Now I'm missing a screw somewhere over there, so just make sure you remove everything here. So starting from one corner. Also, if you guys find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. Now that we remove all the screws, we're going to slide out the caddy for the DVD drive. And we're going to remove these screws on the bottom. They are really short and flat screws. Yeah, this one is broken, so as soon as I touch it, it just came out. So the base is broken, you can put an epoxy in there. It's not necessary, but if you want. A two screw is more than fine. Once you remove those, now you want to grab your opening tool. And you want to stick it between the bottom cover and the palm rest. And you just want to twist it like that. Go to the side under the DVD drive. Go a little more towards the corner on this side. As soon as you do one side, you're pretty much fine. Just grab it up, wiggle it around, and it will release itself. All right. Now down here, you can see the hard drive right there. And there's no fan or anything, just a heat plate right in here. And there's no M.2 slot anywhere to be seen. This is for a DVD drive. You can purchase a caddy for the hard drive that has a DVD support, uh, a DVD caddy, and you put a secondary storage in here. So it connects through here. If you want to add a secondary storage, that's another way you can do it, but you cannot remove the face plate for here. It becomes one piece, so it's gonna look kind of ugly, like a step down here. In case you want to just add it, but you can add up to four terabyte solid state drive in here or a two terabyte mechanical drive in here with no problem. To remove the hard drive, you do not need to disconnect the battery, absolutely, is not required. But if you want to be paranoid and remove it, just pull this jack backward, and that's how you disconnect the battery. To put it back in, make sure you go straight inside the jack and you pinch it right in there. But again, you don't need to do that if you want to upgrade the hard drive. So we're going to remove the four screws that touches the caddy for the hard drive. The caddy is a bracket that holds the hard drive in place. So remove the four screws and then slide back to the side the hard drive. 
and you can see the whole thing comes out now all you want to do is remove the four screws two screws on this side two screws on this side and remove the hard drive just remember about the orientation of the SATA connector and the power connector right in here because as soon as you grab the new drive whoops, the new drive has to have the same orientation so you have to put it in the same way that you put in it you can't just put this one the other way around otherwise it's not going to slide in inside the connector so go ahead and remove the screws on the side all right and now we're going to remove the hard drive and we're going to put this solid state drive in there I just align the screws and put them right in there Now you have the new drive in there, all you want to do is slide, put it down in an offset position and then slide it inside the connector. Make sure it's nicely in there and put the four screws to hold the hard drive in place. Once you're done with that, if you have disconnected the battery, plug it back in, grab the bottom cover, make sure you put the HDMI and USB port section in a 45 degree inside the jack and scoop it right in there. And then hold it and push down the other corner. Make sure you hear those nice big flex sounds all around. And you want to put the flat screws right under the DVD drive. I'll just put two of them because one of them is broken. So put two. And keep the other one on the other side. And slide down the DVD drive. Hold the caddy, the plastic. And start putting up the rest of the screws. As soon as I'm done putting the screws, I'm just going to connect the USB drive. That has my Windows image in there, and I'll get you on a show you guys how to boot to it and how to get to the initial of the Windows installation. If you want to continue what, uh, installing, follow my other video how to install it properly. So I don't want to make this video boring and show you guys a step that you may know already. Now that we put all the screws, if you see any gap opening, just pinch them together. So you want to put the screw, I mean the USB in any of the USB ports. You want to, before you install Windows, always make sure that you have the charger plugged in. Once the charger is plugged in, connect the charger in the jack, make sure the LED turns on. Now that's the reset button. I don't see any LED lights. Yeah, there is a LED light in the front for the battery. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna power on and it should detect my USB. It should detect that there's no system inside the windows, inside the hard drive, and it should start automatically booting up through the USB. And it says that it's not on, on UEFI mode only. And this one, it's a UEFI mode. It cannot boot because it's set to a custom legacy. So we can do that just by pressing Control Alt Delete and F2 or F1. And once we go to the BIOS, it should take us to the BIOS, it doesn't. So I press Function F1 or something, or Escape. And there we go. Function F1, F2 or Escape, it will take you to the BIOS. Inside the BIOS, you want to go to the tab, it says uh, Security boot it says legacy support boot mode and you want to press enter and you want to change it to uefi okay and after that you want to turn off the lan boot you want to turn it off because you don't need that and usb boot fast boot everything enable exit save changes now what it's going to do is just going to boot up to the usb easily so it's going to start reading the USB and it's going to load the uh, installation steps. I'll make a video how to install it properly. You can check that link in the video description in case you want to know step by step how to install it properly. I'm just going to wait for a few seconds and it's going to start loading up the installation process. And there we have it. Yes. And now we are inside the installation. Choose your language and click next. I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any question or request, 
Feel free to leave them in a video comment or try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.